Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Matt's Mindset Monday. And today I have a special guest with us. But before we get into that, uh, I want to talk a little bit about what today's episode is. And today's all about energy because uh, I'm a big believer. And, and I know my guest and, and some others of you out there believe this as well as everything you do affects your energy. And it's either going to give you energy and fuel you. And, and that's your that's your passion. That's your, your unique ability, something that really drives you and you get a lot out of or it takes energy away from you and and kind of uh, pulls you in the opposite direction and, and almost even can drain you at times so um, we're going to talk a lot about you know what why energy is important um, what can you do to protect your energy um, if your energy isn't where you want it to be kind of uh, what what action items can you take in order to be able to move it in a different direction uh, we'll also talk about some different resources and things along those lines as well so it's all about energy and I have my guest that I'll introduce really quickly is Shelly Westendorf um, of course I've known Shelly for multiple years she's uh, my business partner on the real estate team side of things uh, but I'll let her introduce herself and tell you a little bit more about her and her family. Thank you, Matt. Um, thank you guys for having me here. Uh, I'm 45. I've been with my husband, John, for, gosh, we've been together 23 years. We have two kids. Grant's 19 and Avery's going to be turning 18 in a couple weeks. I'm from Owensboro. Um, John grew up in Cincinnati in northern New Jersey, and we moved back here in 2003 to raise our family. Yep. Awesome. So, uh, and what about your, either, I guess, start with previous roles, give us a little background to, to what you did um, before real estate. and Before real estate, I've been in real estate now six years and I was an executive assistant um, for several years, um, different positions held at different locations. Um, and I did advertising sales. So I had a little bit of sales background when I started with real estate and then um, joined 2016, became a realtor. You and I became partners in 2017. And I've served on multiple board of directors, um, communities here in our committees here in our local community. So let's talk, uh, before we get into today's subject, let's talk about, you know, obviously, a business partner. Funny story. Like, I just I love talking about the stories. How long did it take me to accept to go into business with you? Why don't you tell our, our listeners a little bit about that story? <laughs> um, uh, Matt was always my go-to. Like, in the brokerage, if I had a question, I'd, like, sit outside his office until he got there, ask him a question. And he is probably one of the smartest people I've ever met. And oh, no, <laughs> I don't know about that. Certain things <laughs> with certain things. Um, and then my business was starting to grow, but I knew I didn't want to be all consuming. So I went to Matt and I said, I'd like for you to be my business partner. And he let me sit on it for about a month, wondering if he was going to accept it. Um, and then he did. Thankfully, um, because I was like, Dude, I thought it was going to be something like, oh, yeah, absolutely. No. And the reason I wanted to bring that up is because at the time, and, and you know, Shelly knows this story, but I, I'm not sure how many other people do, is I was thinking about getting out of the industry altogether. So, um, you know, I had always been a high-level um, high manager at, at a manufacturing facility, um, and I got into real estate, honestly, just to uh, keep from blowing through my savings. Uh, and at the time, I was you know, I had never really treated real estate as, as a full-time job. Uh, I tell people all the time, like, honestly, during that period, I probably played more golf than I sold houses. Uh, but, you know, so I had to take some time and evaluate, you know, if it, where I wanted to go in my in my future and and what the what path it was leading me down. And, um, you know, one thing that I realized in my conversations with Shelly is I had never given real estate a fair shot. I'd never gone all in. Um, so, you know, we had a bunch of conversations over the course of that month. And the one thing that I think finally I was like, you know what, I need to give, I need to give this a fair shot because I owe it to myself. And then uh, me and Shelly sat down and decided we were going to go all in super hard for one year. 
uh, and kind of see what would happen and then reevaluate at that point. And, uh, you know, one thing that, and the reason I bring this up is because we went into it with this really great energy, right? And, um, you know, we knew expectations up front. Hey, here's what I'm going to do. Here's what you're going to do. We're going to go really hard for a year and we're going to see what happens. And, and I, I bring this story up because I think it's important to have a plan and then to also consider who you're getting into business with and um, do they match you, you know, you in terms of some key things, not in terms of skill set, because when it comes to skill set, I think business partners should actually bring opposite things to the table. And that's what makes you hugely successful. Right. Uh, but when it comes to energy, culture, uh, the the um, what's the word I'm looking for, your standards, if you will, you know, well, those you types expectation. Of your expectation yeah. is something that you, you can have it at a high level and you need it at a high level because ultimately it's affecting you. You are the most important person. Um, so having that high expectation is good. I never thought it was until probably the past year and a half, two years that I've really focused on my expectations and my standards. Um, and I say, raise them, <laughs> keep them high. So the, uh, so let's jump in and talk about energy. So, you know, this is, Mindset Monday, um, always kick it off the same way. What does energy mean to you? And really, what's your mindset around energy? Because I know you've had this big shift in the past year or two. I have. And a lot of times for, for me, it's that vibe or feeling that affects your peace of mind, your mood, and actually gives you inspiration. But then on the flip side, it can cause you tension and anger and anxiety if it's the negative energy. Um, and ultimately our energy is who we are. You know, I mean, it determines your happiness. Mm -hmm. So now we both were at the same conference and we're definitely going to get into talking about Sean Anchor's, you know, happiness um, mm -hmm. conversation that we had the other day. So for you, and this isn't something that we plan for, but I'm just curious, like energy, is it, do you feel like energy is internal or external in terms of like happiness in particular? Like Both. what controls your happiness? Both. Um, we are control of our happiness. We, no one else can make us happy. We have to be happy first. Um, and your environment, your people around you, um, social media <laughs> is a huge, huge proponent of people being tense and anxious. Um, so it's up to you to control your environment. And ultimately, when you're doing that, it's going to lead to what you want. You are creating your own happiness. Yeah, I love that. And, you, and you're spot on. So let's let's dive into this topic. So, um, you know, how how does energy define you? Like, how, how does energy define Shelly Westendorf? Well, it's funny because I, I mean, this goes back probably two years where even the beginning of mine and yours partnership, you told me that I can bring bad energy, like, cause you absorb who's around you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. Okay. You know, and you still had to remind me from time to time because I'm, I wasn't aware, you know, and being aware and owning your faults and owning your weaknesses is a huge part of what defines you because you can't grow if you don't know where you need growth. Um, people pick up on it. You know, if someone's going to complain all the time and they're negative or they're abrasive, you feel that like you feel it in your neck, you feel it in your shoulders. Um, and that's in person and again, social media. Um, but on the flip side, I'm drawn to people who excite easily, you know, um, build others up inclusiveness. That's a huge one for me. Um, I'm going to be that person. If I see you somewhere and you're sitting by yourself, I'm going to come get you and pull you into my circle. Yeah. And energy is huge for me. And that's, that's something that, you know, like what you were mentioning is that I'm very much a energy person. And I don't think I've realized that until probably so we went into business <laughs> Yeah, right around that time. Like, honestly, like a year or two before that, um, I kind of started to notice some things about me that it was different. And I'm very much on the energy that 
I'm around, I tend to radiate and reflect, meaning that if I'm a, if I'm around people that are, um, you know, maybe a little bit negative, then I become a little bit negative, or at least I'm not my normal, you know, try to be happy self. If I'm around people who are like pumping others up and, and bringing the energy and things like that, then, then I'm, I'm the same way, which is why I think that it's a, a huge talking point of, you know, that we have inside this. And really what I really ultimately break bolt it down to is, you know, there's a victim mentality that mm -hmm. is very real thing in, in today's society. And, and I'm not talking that I'm above it. I, I fall into the victim mentality from time to time, just like everybody else is. But I was, as I was preparing for this, it was what really does victim mentality mean? And I wrote down some notes here and it is feeling powerless or helpless, dwelling on negativity, general self-abuse, uh, reliving the past and staying there, blaming the world, consumed by problems, and then feeling cheated. Um, so those are, when we, when we reference victim mentality, those are the things that, that we're kind of referencing. And another thing I want to say is when I talk about energy and you are, you know, in charge of your own happiness, I am by no means saying that you have to be happy every day because that's exhausting. <laughs> you know, it is, no one can be happy all the time, you know, it's having a more positive outlook. It's having self, you know, the way in which you look at yourself um, in a more positive way. It's not being happy and smiling all the time because that would wear me out. <laughs> yeah, it's being true to who you are. So yeah. there is one thing that um, I say a lot and I, I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence on if I'm going to change this philosophy, but one thing I've always said is you can't control what happens to you. You can control how you react. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, I, and I truly fully believe that. And then in, in speaking or not speaking with, but attending Sean Anker's little keynote speech, what I realized is we uh, can only control to a certain extent mm -hmm. to, we also need outside influences to help us control. So there was um, the experiment. And I, I was telling Jen about this the other day is, you know, that, uh, I can't remember who put it on, but there was an experiment that was in a hospital and they basically measured customer service, like how patients felt after the doctor's procedures and things like that happened. And they, they measured it and took surveys and then they stuck people in the hallways. They couldn't go into the rooms due to, you know, HIPAA laws and privacy and things like that. But they just stuck people in the hallways that smiled as people walk by. So you just had a bunch of people to send up there smiling, nodding, you know, and as people would walk by, just then they did, a, I think they did that for two weeks, if I remember correctly, and they did another survey and the quality of care, according to the surveys, went up 17% just by having somebody smile at you. And, and I think that goes to, that's when I was kind of like, oh, wow. And we'll talk about some other notes and stats from that here in a minute. But that's when I was like, oh, wow, you know, the outside factors of the world do influence the way that we feel and the energy that we absorb and then also the energy that we kind of put out so yes you can't control what happens to you. you can't control how you react to it at the same time your environment is going to play a huge factor into your ability to consistently react the way that you want to well that and look how happy people are when you're sitting at a mcdonald's and the person in front of you pays for your meal you know mm -hmm. it could have been just for a coke but they were thought of and people put that on social media and then people go and repeat it. You know, kindness. If you smile at people and you get someone to smile back, you may be a, the only person that smiled at that person. Mm -hmm. You could have changed their whole day. You didn't hurt anything. It didn't cost you anything. But just the simple act of smiling at someone or holding a door for someone. I mean, it just... The Ritz Carlton that has the uh, 10 five rule. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Anytime somebody's within 10 feet, smile, kind of mm -hmm. nod. If they get within five feet, acknowledge them and have a conversation. So yeah. I think that that's kind of a, along those lines. And, and for those of you who, who don't know, there's some really great studies and books that have been written all about Ritz Carlton's customer service. So that's something that they absolutely nail. So, 
what what about so we identified what energy is and the way that it makes it feel and and I think it's important to to note that different people pick up energy differently um so you know for like me I'm a huge empath like I'm going to feel whatever energy is in the room and and for others you know they they might it might not affect them to the same right so so I think it's important to understand how energy affects you and then move forward with protecting the energy, which is something I know you've worked a lot on over the over the past, you know, 18 months or so. So what are some things that you're doing to help protect your energy? Um, I am a person that wants to take care of people. You know, I I nurture. I I. I love being a nurturer, but they always say you can't pour from an empty cup. So I had to start taking care of myself. Um, if I know I'm going to be around a lot of people and it's going to kind of wear me out, I build in rest times, you know, like I will, before I go to the next event or the next meeting, I'm going to sit and I'm going to listen to some music and I'm not going to talk, you know, and you have to build in rest times during your day, because if not, you're going to end up at the end of the day and you are going to be exhausted and you can't pour from an empty cup. It's not fair. Um, if you are around someone that takes it out of you, you need to start learning those healthy boundaries of having the conversation of, hey, you know, if you know that's going to be the case, I've only got 30 minutes, but yeah, we can go meet, you know, for coffee or I'd love to hang out, but you're in control of how much time you're going to allow yourself to be with that person who makes you feel a certain way. And I don't I mean, think it's people. You kind of touched on social media. Oh um, my gosh. It yeah, is so can, you talk, can you talk a little bit about what you mean by that? Um, it's not wrong to unfollow. <laughs> I highly, if there's someone who is putting negativity out there or is always complaining um, or putting other people down, unfriend or unfollow. I mean, and limit the amount of time you're allowing yourself on social media. That screen time, I don't know if like for kids, I noticed when Grant was younger and he would play video games over a long time, his mood, like he would get not, he would be angry and easily, you know, agitated because that much screen time is not good for anyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's, you know, not only in social media, one thing that I kind of caught myself doing a, a lot of over the last couple of weeks in full transparency was I was falling a lot on the news as far as yes. what's going on in Russia and Ukraine. Yes. So like in the mornings I was waking up and I was reading these devastating stories about buildings getting destroyed and civilians getting hurt and, you know, and military personnel, you know, and reading numbers about the numbers of deaths and, and all these different attacks. And I was reading it, you know, in the mornings, I was checking on at lunch, checking on at night because I try to keep up with what's going on in the economy so we can educate our agents and the consumers right um and then so when reading all of that like I started to notice the last thing before I went to sleep and the very first thing before I, when I woke up was negative negative meaning that not in a purposeful manner like I wasn't going negative and the reporters weren't going negative it's just it's negative context in terms of the way that I, I try to uh keep my mind and my mindset so that's something that I realized really quickly is that, you know, and I, and I think I should know this because you can ask, you know, Jen, she like, I don't watch scary movies. I don't watch, you know, anything about documentaries around murders, um, you know, anything along those lines. Like I don't do it because I don't like the way it makes me feel. So I think you being conscious of not just the people, but social media, the news, like what are you, what's in your world and how is that affecting you? What's funny, just an example, last night, Avery and I, before I went to sleep, we watched I Love Lucy. Hmm. Oh my gosh, the amount of laughter that we had before you go to sleep, and it's different, you know, it just, you actually can fall asleep easier when your body is relaxed. Um, but if you're scrolling, you know, if you're watching something that's very intense, it's going to affect your sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Totally agree. What, um, so why do you feel like it's important to protect your energy? Like all those things that we just talked about and why does that matter? Um, my new go-to is, I mean, this may be part of being 45 years old. Um, if it doesn't drive me, it drains me and I don't have time to be drained. 
you know, um, it determines your energy determines your ultimate happiness and how you feel. Um, and I'm in control of what I allow in my life. You know, I've changed a lot of things um, in the past year or so. And the older I get, my table becomes smaller and who I allow to sit and it's due to how that person makes me feel or those people make me feel. Um, it's just important. I can't stress how important it is to have that high expectation for yourself, that high standard for yourself. Um, because what about, what's your, what's your standard in terms of, um, so you, you know, you take that and you, you put yourself around certain types of people, right? The people who, who build you up and things like that. And, and no matter who we are, we all have those moments where we're not our greatest self. Right. Absolutely. So, so you Absolutely. have somebody that, you know, had, who, you know, is maybe going through a bad day and they're now starting to affect your energy, but they're generally speaking such a great person. Like, do you address that? Like, what do you, what's that look like? Oh, we all have bad days and I am, you know, not saying, I'm not saying this is a hundred percent of the time, but it needs to be 80% of the time. You know, you need to be doing this 80% of the time with yourself. Um, if someone is having a bad day, gosh, I want to hear about it. You know, that's up to me on how I respond to it, but no, that's what friends are for. That's what colleagues are for. That's, you know, no one is going to be able to get through life without someone else. And if someone's complaining, that's fine. But if they're always complaining, that's where you've got to say, okay, I know what I can take. So I'm going to limit. I had a really great conversation with someone the other day and it was, um, you know, in, in their position, they, they always ask, you know, how's your day? And then a lot mm -hmm. of times, and, and we've studied this, right. That the brain typically brings up the negative. Yeah. Um, you know, have you ever, have you ever heard the statement that says, did you have a bad day or do you have a bad 15 minutes or yeah. the way our minds work? Is it the, the negative, negative things that happen to us have a bigger impact in terms of neurons than the positive things. So, you know, we might have 15 great things that happen to us and we have that one bad experience and we tend to focus on that bad experience, right? We're, we're our own worst critics and, and worst enemies at the same time, it seems like. Um, so, you know, it was all about how do we tailor the conversation to bring out positive things. So instead of saying, hey, how you know, tell what's been going on lately. It's like, Hey, tell me something good. Like you'll hear Shelly will tell you, she hears me say this yeah. all the time. Like, Hey, tell me something good. Cause I keep the conversation positive. And it's like, um, you know, somebody just as in this example was like, Oh, well, you know, my, um, my significant other had had to have surgery and it was cancerous and they were able mm -hmm. to find it, but it went into the jaw and, you know, I could have went down or, you know, all the, the, the side of how bad, you know, cancer is and, and have yeah. anybody who's ever had to deal with that. You all know what that's like. Um, but instead I took, you know, suggested, let's take the conversation somewhere else. Like, Hey, how thankful are you that yep. that was found so that now it can be treated in order to be able to spend so much more time with this person? Like it's, it's, it's a little wordsmithing, but it is, you can control the conversations you have. We were, I was somewhere. It was just in the past. I don't even remember, gosh, past few days. And the conversation with the people I was with was going to a place that I was like, oh, all right. So I'm going to be the ringleader and I'm going to be like, okay, tell me something good. You know, tell me something you're grateful for. Give me some kind of gratitude. And you know how quickly that conversation, and then it led to other conversations, mm -hmm. you know, but all it takes is just getting away from going down that rabbit hole. Because I feel like when people get down that rabbit hole, they have a really hard time coming back out, especially yeah. with negativity. It's easy to complain. Myself included. Oh, you know, and that's one thing that is. Don't be afraid about. to say that. You know, don't be afraid yeah. to say, hey, stop. Everyone say, tell me something good. Because you don't want, especially if you're out in a social setting, you don't want that. You're out to have fun and relax. Mm -hmm. um, so that was just my. What about um, gratitude? What, how do you feel about the impact of gratitude? It is perspective. It is a really good way to gain perspective because it makes you think and it makes you think of the little things. People can say, I am grateful for, you know, having a car that works. What about having a cup of coffee in the morning? You know, what about being grateful for sunshine? 
that's a huge one for me. The older I get, I'm more affected by the seasons. Um, what about being grateful for a text that you got from someone that you hadn't heard from? You know, it's just things like that. It doesn't have to be huge. People always think, oh, I'm grateful, you know, for something big. It can be the smallest thing. And if you are constantly having thoughts of gratitude, it will change you for sure. So there's actually been studies um, done on two things when it comes to gratitude. Number one, um, journaling about a positive experience mm -hmm. from the previous 24 hours because the mind can't tell a difference in the actual real life experience or the recalling of the experience. So there's been a bunch of studies on that. So that's something that um, I would suggest everybody to do is, is, is start journaling. Even if it's two to three minutes, recall something from the previous day and just write about it because, you know, the, and uh, I don't remember if it's dopamines or what it is, but the, that, that neurological action inside your brain relives that experience, which can help push you into a higher mood. And then there's the other thing, and, and this is something that Sean Anker talked about is, um, is about the gratitude exercise. So one day, uh, every single, you know, or once per day for, uh, I think it was basically, I can't remember how long you said to do it, 90 days, maybe, uh, to text somebody or email them gratitude, but it has to be somebody different every single day. This affects couple things. Number one is after you get past eight, day eight, you typically run out of your, your close circle. Like, so my first text, you know, might be to Shelly, next one's to, you know, my wife, next one's to Ryan, next one's to so, so, so many people. When you get to day eight, now your brain has to start scanning for people and you have to go further back. And just the activity of scanning for gratitude helps improve your overall, you know, demeanor and, and um, going from pessimistic pessimist to optimist so they do that around day 21 you actually will notice a change in energy and happiness meaning that they did studies on this where they took slightly pessimistic pessimistic i can't say that pessimistic people and did this over 21 days and they actually became slightly optimistic uh and then not only do you have the effect on yourself imagine what that text is doing for somebody else because we never know when somebody else is having a bad and day. that's the exciting part is knowing that you are doing it for someone else but yet you're still feeling good you know what i'm saying i mean to me it's a no-brainer it's yeah. a no-brainer and, 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 and to your point yourself to do it yeah and and happiness the other thing is to know that happiness doesn't mean you're that big uh, hurrah cheerleader oh. you know type person just with this super abundance amount of energy happiness honestly is being content with yourself and then yeah. having control of your mindset in order to be able to achieve the things you want in life and i don't mean just professional like it's also personal side of things personal also. side as well just peace and contentment yep so what about like triggers like do you know about your triggers and, and what are some things that that you do to protect well, those it's funny um and triggers can be all different things you know it can go back to what we were talking about a person a place a social media but even if someone procrastinates you know and if procrastination causes you stress and anxiety learn to be more proactive, learn to get that done, you know, cause you can control that action, you know, um, complete that task sooner. So then you're avoiding, you know, the stress of having to do it, get it out of the way. Um, my biggest thing that I have taught myself the past, you know, 18 months, no is not a bad word. It's powerful. Um, when you say some, when you're saying yes to someone, think about who you're saying no to. You know, I mean, I just, that's good. I had such a moment in my home where John was like, no more, because I was volunteering. I was saying, yes, I'll be, I'll do this and I'll do that. And you kind of look at it as like, if you give someone the thumbs up, you've got all these fingers pointing back to you on saying, who are you saying no to? And you're saying no to yourself first and foremost, but then you're saying no to your closest people. And that's not good. You know, that comes again from the empty cup pouring from it. And those people deserve my full cup. Yeah. But just know that no is not a bad word. 
Uh, what about, uh, so do you, and I honestly don't know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask, do you do any type of like meditation or focused breathing or anything along no. those lines? Like I'm talking like those peak moments when, whether it's, you know, you're like, oh man, I'm, I'm not feeling the way I need to feel, whether it's anxiety, stress, you know, you, you go down that, that victim mentality or something like that. Like what, what, what are you doing like physically to help change that? If anything, it's one thing I learned from Avery, um, is learning the senses, you focus on five things. When I'm starting to get overwhelmed and, you know, I can tell I'm sighing more, like I sigh when my anxiety is up, you know, and kind of deep breaths, but you focus on something you can smell, something, you know, that you can hear, something that you can see, and you just sit with your eyes closed um, and just try to get to that place. You know, sometimes I'll sit and put on my phone, listening to waves. I actually have a Facebook page that I go to. He always does the sunrise and the sunset at Destin. And they stay on there where you can see the ocean, you see the sunrise and the sunset, and you can hear it. And it's so peaceful. Some That's not peaceful for a lot of people though. So you have to find what works for you. Those things work for me or sitting in silence. Yeah, because the beach to me is stressful. <laughs> exactly. So you have to, okay, yeah. I don't no, know, I got a picture of golf course no, somewhere on Robert Jones with a mountain behind you. And I need you to sit there and close your eyes and think about it. <laughs> so, you know, another really interesting um, study uh, along exercise and, and the impact that it has in terms of uh, mindset and overall energy is. Um, Another study that was done, uh, I believe this one was actually at Harvard uh, by graduates, and it was that if you go out and a 15 minute walk with somebody else outside, um, you know, with somebody else over the and you do it consistently, I believe it's every day. I'm looking at my notes here four to five times per week for 15 minutes uh, with somebody after six months, depression reduces to the same levels as antidepressant drugs. Well, it's funny. I don't know if you've noticed that Avery and I have been going in the, like, we'll go out and we walk this neighborhood behind the office. It is 1.1 mile that we do. And now I think we're down to 18 minute because, you know, when you sit in the office for a while, your body starts hurting. You just need a break going and doing that. And then coming back is a game changer. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you feel like you feel different. So, I mean, you know, one thing she's been doing at home is walking the backyard, you know, when she feels like she needs to get up from the schoolwork, she goes and does it, you know, and it just, it changes you. And it's something we can all do. And it's free. Yeah, free. Just need a little bit of good weather, which we're fortunate enough to have here. Over well, I told her, I said, one time I said, we're going to end up like Forrest Gump, where more and more people are going to start coming out of the office and joining in on our walk. And then we'll have so, this big crowd. <laughs> so that was out. actually a thing. Like, um, <laughs> excuse me but um power walks like that was a real thing um yes. we used to do it when we first opened in Owensboro we go and walk around downtown you remember doing that like Changes. might be time to bring that back because apparently being around people and walking like yes. what it does for your mind is it, amazing and there's a number of different stories about you know looking at a challenge so say you were getting ready to look at and this was the example that Sean used in his keynote speeches if you're looking at a giant hill and you're standing there by yourself and I'm talking like a mountain right and you're getting ready to climb the mountain your mind goes into defense mode and kind of fight or flight and kind of forces you to want to flight so your mind kind of tells you like hey you know this could be dangerous going into survival mode you probably shouldn't do this Versus standing there and looking at the exact same hill with somebody right by your side who is going on that journey with you, you are tenfold more likely to not only go on the actual journey because you have support with you, but your mindset changes and you go from, oh, you shouldn't do this, this is dangerous to, hey, let's go together and let's move together. So I think the power of, of having somebody that is willing to take on challenges with you is, is super important to your mindset as well. Well, even when it's cold, I girlfriend and I went about a month ago out to Wayman Morris. There was still water laying. I think I may have shared this with you. We walked the perimeter of the parking lot, bundled up for four miles, but we didn't even care because we were outside fresh air and talking. Like you don't even realize you're doing it and you feel so much better. I mean, it is a game changer. What, um, what do you have for, um, 
when we're in difficult times, right? So like, what if we are struggling? Like, you know, if, if whether it's, you know, us personally, the people around us are struggling, like what do, what's some extra care type items that we can do in difficult times? Um, like you said earlier, limit the amount of news that you're watching or listening to daily. Um, create like a relaxing and calm sanctuary, whether it be in your home, whether it be in your car, in your office, that you can just go and just be. Remember when I talked about closing your eyes and there is nothing better than when I get home. You know, I mean, that is my place that I can just, even if I go and sit somewhere other than the living room, you know, I'm at peace, um, my backyard, I'm at peace. You know, you've just got to do activities that make you happier. You know, if reading makes you happy, get you a stack of books, not just one, or get you several things downloaded on that Kindle. Because sometimes you'll start reading something and you're like, oh, I don't feel like reading. Well, go to the next, you know, listen to funny podcast. You know, there are so many things out there that are funny. And I'm a big humor person. Like I love to laugh. I love to make other people laugh. So I have found some really cool podcasts that literally in reels, reels make me crack up. I mean, I talked about TikTok the other day about how it can be a time sucker, but it will get you laughing for sure. It makes you laugh. Find those things, you know, um, and know that that time will pass. It will. If you, it will pass. It's not always going to be there. Um, That's something that I've really had to, Mm -hmm. you know, focus on is this too shall pass, but here are the things I'm going to do to make it a little easier until it does. So I was watching a TikTok and it was actually Tom Hanks. Um, and it was about this too shall pass. And it, his exact words were, were, hey, you know, are you feeling down or are you feeling rough? Do you feel like the, the whole world's piling up against you? This too shall pass. What was really interesting, he said, hey, are you feeling great? You feel like the world finally understands you? You feel like you're on, you know, everything's going great? This too shall pass. And it, I think it's important to understand yes. that. You know, when you when you're down and you're raising yourself back up, that's exactly. gonna pass. But when you're up, you're gonna come back down at, at some exactly. point. Yeah. So the what about so what about if you just want to boost your energy? So what mm-hmm. steps do you recommend in terms of people who are just wanting to boost their energy? And then next we'll talk about some resources, maybe books and things like that that can help. Um, get outside. Like I said, if it's cold, bundle up, wear layers, um, stay hydrated, you know limit alcohol and caffeine, um, get more quality sleep, um, not just more sleep, more quality sleep, um, fuel yourself with better foods, um, healthier foods, and then surround yourself with positive people. So it was really interesting. A lot of people know this and, um, I did really good on it. I don't think I was hundred percent, but I quit drinking caffeine last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I did it for not because of happiness, um, honestly, because I was drinking too much coffee. Like, I mean, it was ridiculous. Like I was starting to get jitters. Uh, but what I did notice something like, I felt like almost chemically changed inside of me. And I, I would still have, you know, maybe a, a Coke zero or something like that from time to time. Um, you know, but I, I got a, I probably dropped my caffeine for, intake down like from if and i'm making it like say it's 100 milligrams and i have no idea how much is in a coffee or anything but i would drop it all the way down to like five to ten milligrams like just only when i needed that that little pick me up um and it was amazing what it did and i since have started drinking coffee again because i did miss by halfway through the year i was like man i need something in the morning to kind of get me up and get going but hit listening to you talk what i realize is that i get like i schedule plenty of sleep right i don't get great sleep I wake up a lot interrupted. And, and I think the quality of, of sleep is, is a huge factor in terms of how we feel. So what about uh, resources? Uh, what, you know, books, and I want, I want to kick one off. Um, and I know you have a couple that, or at least one or two that you were going to mention, but The Enlightened Gardener by Sydney Banks. Um, this was actually recommended to me a few years ago, and I found it in a, um, a drunk uh, junk drawer in the back of the junk drawer and it was like, you know, I forgot Ben Kenny had recommended it to me and I pick it up and I was like, Oh, you know, I think everything happens for a reason. Right. And I wasn't meant to read it then, but I was meant to read it now. And it's all about like the three principles in order to that create human reality between mindfulness thoughts and things like that. What was really interesting to me is it's, it's one of those things that if we can 
remove the preconditioned context of the past in terms of how we're going to feel towards something, then that is a game changer, meaning, changer, meaning that if I go into, I'm getting ready to, um, you know, go into a conversation with somebody about, you know, listing a, a condo, for example, just making mm -hmm. something crazy up. Uh, you know, if I listed a condo before and had a really bad experience, I'm going to relate this future interaction to my previous interaction. When we can learn to control our minds and remove those previous interactions and, and the way that they went and only look at things for what they are in terms of, okay, now this is a new original thought, mindfulness and things like that. Game changer in terms You're of how you that's a game changer. Yeah. super hard, super hard, but, but it, it is. Yeah. yeah. What about you? What resources do you have? Um, Energy bus. That's yeah. one of my favorites. I don't know. Um, that and it, it's not some well it is energy but miracle morning and atomic habits together because those things are what i used to help me change my mindset you know i used different parts from each of those books to work on protecting my energy um and learning to say no um and saying yes to myself and my family um there's so many resources. I mean, if you just, I mean, to me, I'm a huge quotes person, you know, um, and I shared some of them with you, but that just, it, they resonate with me. You, um, there's a calm app that I really like. Um, and there's another app shine that I've used. Um, there's just so much out there and, you know, and I am one, I am a huge proponent of behavioral health and talking to somebody, having that third person that doesn't know about you or your family and just being able to release. Gosh, I think it should be like one of those things where you have to, you have to go. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, a lot of people look at, and we've talked about this on, on this podcast, or a lot of people look at it as, as therapy is a bad thing. And, and it's like, no, it to me, it's like, no, it. you're seeking out your better self, like your higher right. self. Right. So, so why wouldn't you, you know, you know, we have business coaches, we have spiritual coaches who are like our preachers and pastors and things like that. Why wouldn't you want to work on like the life side of things and relationships and things like that? So I'm all for it. Let's talk a little bit about these quotes because you did say, Oh, I do want to squeeze in one more. Cause you, you had a note on this one and I actually haven't read this book but energy is your most precious human resource by Susanna Seaton am I saying uh -huh. that correctly yes um it's the one thing you can control as I mean we can't control a lot of things and a lot of people have problems with that <laughs> and that's fine you can control your energy for the most part you know by limitations healthy boundaries um do it for yourself do it for those that you love and care about. I mean, it's crucial. Life is too short. Um, let's look at some of these quotes because you did send in some really good ones and we got about four minutes left. So we'll wrap up on this, but uh, your energy is currency. Spend it well, invest it wisely. Yep. Next one is, let's see here. Love yourself enough to set boundaries. Your time and energy are precious. Precious. You get to choose how you use it. You teach people how to treat you by deciding what you will and what you won't accept. Mm -hmm. And then the next one, everything is energy. Your thoughts begin it. Your emotions amplify it. Your actions increase its momentum. And then everyone who doesn't need access to you. Some people are draining and they don't even know it. You're allowed to say no, to not answer calls, and you're allowed to put yourself first. And then the last one that you sent over to me, which uh, might be my favorite one, be the energy you want to attract. So those are some some key quotes that, that I think are really impactful and, and mindful to kind of what what we're trying to accomplish through this podcast, which is taking better control of our, our energy and living uh, more happy and, and fulfilling lives. So um, anything you want to say to kind of wrap up in, in summary? Or? I don't think so. I just like sitting here talking about it. I'm just like, I could talk about it all day long. I mean, I really could just because I have seen the difference. I mm -hmm. live the difference. Um, and it's just a game changer. 
Yeah. You don't so, even realize you need it half the time. Yeah, take, <laughs> take, take steps towards controlling your energy and watch the change that it has on your life. So Shelly, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you know, I, I think, oh, got a bunch of comments over here that I'm just now getting caught up on. Try mushroom coffee, by the way, FYI for everybody. Cinnamon recommended that. So I'll definitely have to, to look at that. Um, but, you know, appreciate you coming on and sharing this. I know it's something that has had a huge impact on your life, my life as well, and hopefully for the listeners also. A uh, quick uh, reminder for everybody, we will not have Mindset Monday next week. I'm going to be traveling up to Columbus on Monday. So we'll have one week off and then we'll be right back. I'm really excited for um, our next episode, which is going to be all about faith and spirituality. So be sure to tune in for us. That'll be two weeks, Monday at 10 a.m. Uh, that's Central Time, 11 a.m. Eastern. Fantastic. Thanks, y'all. Have a great day. Okay.